ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له اشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون ما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله خير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم شر الأمور محدثاتها كل محدثة بدعة كل بدعة ضلالة كل ضلالة في النار تنايت إن شاء الله مطوقة بات باب اللقطة and this section talks about lost and found and أحكام of things that you find which belong to other people things that people lose and you find uh, we'll talk about the rulings and how you act and how you behave in, in those certain situations. قال مؤلف رحمه الله باب اللقطة وهي على ثلاثة أضرب أحدها ما تقل قيمته فيجوز أخذه والانتفاع به من غير تعريف لقول جابر رخص لنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في العصا والصوت وأشباه يلتقط الرجل ينتفع به ثاني الحيوان الذي يمتنع بنفسه من صغار السباع كالإبل والخيل ونحوهما فلا يجوز أخذهما لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم سئل عن ضالة الإبل فقال ما لك ولها دعها معها حذاءها وسقاؤها ترد الماء وتأكل الشجر حتى يأتيها ربها ومن أخذ هذا لم يملكه لزمه ضمانه ولم يبرأ منه إلا بدفعه إلى نائب الإمام ثالث ما تكثر قيمته من الأثمان والمتاع والحيوان الذي لا يمتنع من صغار السباع فيجوز أخذه. So tonight إن شاء الله we'll talk about that about اللقطة ويقال اللقطة واللقاطة. It can be also called اللقطة واللقاطة. The famous one is اللقطة and that is why uh, it's called that because اللقطة comes from لقطة يعني to pick up. يعني التقط الرجل متاعه he picked it up okay so اللقطة is when you find something you pick it up that is in the in the language فاصطلاحا مال أو مختص ضل عن صاحبه ضل عن صاحبه أو عن ربه the meaning in شريعة when we say اللقطة it's it's كم سلام ورحمة الله wealth Mal, something that belongs to someone that he lost. Okay, that is the definition of a lukat. Yani someone lost something, that lost thing is called lukata. And you look in the definition, malun aw mukhtas. Mal, yani wealth. Mal, yani anything that has value, you can sell it or buy it. But because you have it, you can sell it. You don't buy your own stuff. It's called mal. So if you lose that thing, if you lose a car, if you lose a keychain, if you lose money, if you lose clothes, you can sell all those things if you wish to. So that is mal. Or mukhtas. Mukhtas, yani something belongs to you, but you cannot sell it. There are certain things that you can own, but you cannot sell. Like? Kelb. Dog, you can have a dog in certain situation, but you cannot. The dog cannot be sold and bought. And we'll talk about that when we reach that point, inshallah. But there are things uh, that you cannot sell even though you have them, you own them, you cannot sell them or buy them. The ulama have talked about many things, but one of the things that a lot of the ulama agreed on is that il kelb, you cannot sell. Because why? It's haram to have him. And in certain situations, it's permissible. But beside the point, so that is something is not called wealth, but belongs to you, one of your belongings. So it's either wealth, because you can sell it, or a belonging that you lost. That is what's called, called a lukata. Okay? The asl, يعني where it comes from, the, the issue of a lukata in Sahihain, عن زيد بن خالد الجهني أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم سئل عن لقطة الذهب والورق. Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was asked in Bukhari and Muslim this hadith. خالد بن زيد 
he asked the Prophet, he said the Prophet was asked about gold and silver if someone finds it. And it's lost. Someone dropped gold or silver and someone found it. What he should do with it? قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اعرف وكاءها وعفاصها ثم عرفها سنة فإن لم تعرف فاستنفقها ولتكن وديعة عندك وديعة عندك فإن جاء طالبها يوم من الدهر فادفعها إليه but the, the bottom line, we'll talk about the meaning of this hadith, but the bottom line, the Prophet ﷺ is guiding him what to do. And he, I found the chain or a necklace or a silver or gold or money or wallet or whatever. So here, because of this question, the Prophet ﷺ is guiding him what to do and we will come to that, to that point, inshallah. Usually, يعني, ifas is, is where people keep their money. Huh? They usually keep it in a little, uh, in a little container that has a rope in it, right? And we can't, it's the rope that keeps it tight and keeps it from getting lost. We'll talk about it. In the same hadith, the Prophet ﷺ was asked, عَنْ ضَالَّةِ الْإِبْلِ What if you find a lost camel? قَالَ huh? النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ مَا لَكَ وَلَهَا يعني what's, What you want to do with it? يعني leave it alone. We'll talk about that. معها حذاؤها وسقاؤها تريد الماء وتأكل الشجر حتى يجدها رب يعني why you bother with it وسئل عن ضالة الغنم فقال خذها فإنما هي لك أو لأخيك أو للذئب هل أنت هنا طيب طيب so إن شاء الله we'll talk about these things what they mean so in general, uh, I didn't translate because we will come, because the translation, يعني, uh, without understanding the meaning, doesn't mean, doesn't carry much meaning to it. Uh, if money, if someone loses wealth, okay, يعني, well, someone loses something that belongs to them, whatever the situation. But let's talk about wealth for now. Someone loses wealth, someone loses money, loses property, loses something belonging, loses car, loses keys, loses jewelry, whatever it is. It's not, it's one of three, it falls under one of three situations. And it can, one, it can be one of those three. First, ما تقل قيمته فيجوز أخذه والانتفاع به من غير تعريف. That's, يعني those are what the ulama have divided and that's what Ibn Qudam رحمه الله had mentioned in his book, العمدة, عمدة الفقه. First, the first type of things that people lose, things that are not very valuable, okay? Things that don't have much value. Yani, if he loses it, it's not like he's gonna be stressed about it. All right? If you lose it, it's not like you're gonna lose sleep on it because you're thinking about it. Some things people use in their daily life and if they lose it, it's not a big deal, all right? Because they might have many of it or they might just get another one, or it's something that of no much no worth. And the Prophet and Hadith Jabir mentioned some of those, or Jabir mentioned some of those things, like a salt, the 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 whip that they used to to use with the animals, or stick. You know, uh, today we might say a pencil or a pen. Of course, some pens are very expensive, but in general, they're not stuff like that. So the things that have no value. That is the first thing. So if you find them, you use them, like they're yours. And you are not required to uh, announce, and you're not required to, uh, to identify or to the people that you found something and you're looking for the person it belongs to. So things of no value, that is the first section. You can have, that is with, with the condition that you don't know who they belong to. You don't know who they belong to. If you know, then forget about these sections. Yeah. If you know where, who they belong to, you take it straight to them. Here we're talking about you find things, you don't know who they belong to. All right? So with things that don't have much value, these things you return to, to where they belong. So that's the first condition. Allah يُعْرَفَ صَاحِبُهُ the other condition or restriction 
and that is what the fuqaha have placed here mimma la tatba'uhu himmatun aw sa'at nas mimma la tatba'uhu himmatu aw sa'at nas that's what i already said meaning that when it's lost the average people if they lose such thing they are not much concerned about it the average because the rich you cannot compare them to the majority and the poor you cannot measure them to the majority so we say the restriction here of course it's understood that when you find something someone lost if you we're talking about someone you don't know all right so the the main condition is with this part the part that of no value how do i know that it's of no value and how can i measure can i find the a lost uh, 100,000 necklace and say, well, يعني, it's not of no value, <laughs> and take it. No, there is a restriction, there is an uh, outline, there is a condition. How do I know it's not valuable? Based, I look at the average people, and usually the average people are the majority of people. Do the majority of people, if they have such thing and they lost it, will they be concerned about it? So if the answer is no, then you keep it. But the answer of the majority, not your personal answer. Now, for example, if we're here in, in we live in the States, if one of us, let's say, assume يعني, we're all average people, uh, someone of us loses a dollar. Is that something that any one of us will be so concerned about and will be thinking about and will not sleep and say, wow, I lost a dollar. Most probably we won't. Maybe even $10. All right? Maybe $20. But I think over $20 starts a problem. But the point is, that is how we say. Now, awsatun nas with two things. Yani the average people in two things. I, I mentioned the rich and poor. So when we say average people, yani in wealth, in, in possession. And usually most people average. But there is a second condition that some of the ulama put and really deserves to be considered because you can find a very rich man, if he loses a penny, he will be mad. Right? And you find very poor people, he is willing to lose 100,000 and he will not even care. So if we only limit it to average people regarding wealth, we're stuck with those people. And we want to create a rule for everyone. So we say average people, malan wa khuluqan. In money, يعني in wealth, and in manners. In manners, يعني they have manners. Because if someone who's a millionaire and he's crying about ten dollars he lost, people usually look down at such person, right? So such person comes out of this rule. So the rule needs to be that when something is va not valuable, we say it has to be not valuable for the ad average people in wealth and they have manners, the average manner. So most people one dollar will not make a difference. But you will always find those people that a dollar, if they lose a dollar, they will be upset. So those people are out of the picture. Okay? So when we, from this point, the first section of luqata, or the first type of lost things that we find, is that things that don't have much value, and with those things you keep. You keep. In the hadith of Jabir, he said, stuff like a whip or a stick, in our days, maybe a pencil, you know, maybe, yeah, and you can think about it, uh, stuff like that. Very things that don't have much value that the one who lost it doesn't, is not really looking for. Okay? But those are the conditions. The condition is you don't know they, who they belong to, and the second, it's not a big deal to the majority of people. All right? The majority of normal people, yeah. Okay. جاء في الصحيحين ناو الدليل as I said رخص لنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في العصا والصوت وأشباهه that's the دليل that ابن قدامة رحمه الله يزداد 
Allah bin Jabir, uh, Jabir bin Abdullah uh, said that the Prophet ﷺ allowed us to keep the whip or the stick that we find. That's the deal that some of the Fuqaha use and Ibn Qudama use, but it's a weak hadith. Okay? It's a weak, a weak hadith. There's a story in Sahih, in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim hadith Anas, and Nabi Sallallahu وجد تمرة في الطريق فأخذها وقال لولا أني أخشى أن تكون من الصدقة لا أكلتها. The Prophet Sallallahu when he's walking on the street, Anas says he found a date, a date, يعني تمرة one date. So he took it. Then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if I wasn't afraid that it will be from الصدقة, I would have eaten it. What does that mean? What that means is he was afraid وسلم, that this tamra belongs to the money of his zakah. Okay? And the money of his zakah is haram on Muhammad وسلم, and Ali Muhammad. The Prophet وسلم, does not receive any money from his zakah and his family as well. Or his sadaq. And Prophet وسلم, said, It's the dirt of people. The zakah usually that you give is the dirt of your money. Why? Because you're purifying your money. When you take zakah from it, you're purifying what you have. You take anything that might have, and you clean, you clean it from the doubtful money. And none of us, his money is 100% pure, wallahu alam. Okay, so the bottom line is, uh, that is where zakah. خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً يَعْنِي زَكَاءً to zakihim wa to tahirohum biha. And you purify them with it. The zakah purify you and you purify your wealth. So the Prophet ﷺ said, if I wasn't afraid that it will be from sadaqat, yani from zakah or sadaqah, I would have eaten it. So that shows you that he ﷺ found a date. And a date is something no one is concerned about if he loses a date. But yet the Prophet ﷺ took it. All right? So that's a delete that he took it. But the only reason he didn't eat it because of what, what I mentioned. And Nuqil al Ijma'i and the ulama then reported the consensus amongst the ulama that things of no worth, the person who finds them, finds them, keep them. Now, sometimes, يعني, when I said pencil or pen or eraser or stuff like that, it's not a big deal. But sometimes the pen can be, can be very expensive can be a very expensive thing, okay? So that in this case, you, that is out of the picture. That does not belong to this category. So when I say the pencil, that doesn't mean every pencil. When I say the pen, that doesn't mean every pen, okay? Usually what people are not, are not concerned about. Uh, second thing, so this is the first time. So just to summarize, the first type of lost things, and you find them, Things of no value, much value, and people who lose them, on average and in general, will not care about them. Yani they will not put an ad in the newspaper looking for them, or flyers all over. Those things you usually keep and you can benefit from, as long as you don't know they, who they belong to. The second type, things that if you find, you're not allowed to pick. Yeah, and you don't say, oh, someone lost this, so let me take it. Okay, you're not allowed, period. Okay? Uh, يقول, يعني ابن قدامة, والثاني, الحيوان الذي يمتنع بنفسه من صغار السباع كالإبل والخيل ونحوهما فلا يجوز أخذهم. He said, the animals, يعني he's talking about big animals يعني horse, camels this kind of animals يعني يمتنع بنفسه يعني can protect itself All right? and can survive on its own some يعني الامتنع يمتنع بنفسه يعني ودع لما سن إما لكبر جثته يعني he can protect himself because he's big in size Okay, so most most animals will not attack. وإما لطيرانه يعني can fly, can protect himself. وإما لسرعة عدوه he can run fast, so not anyone can catch him. وإما لامتناع بنفسه عن السباع لما به or himself or itself the animal is from السباع. 
يعني هيز ا وايلد انيم يعني اللاين سمان لاس يعني يو فايند اللاين يو سي او سمان لاس ذس لاين ليت مي بيك هيم اب تيك هيم اب يو دونت دو ذات ايفن اف يو نو يعني سمان لاس ذس يو دونت تيك بيكوز واتس غانا هابن تو ذس لاين اتس نوت غوينغ تو داي كامل هورس بيردز ذي ار نوت غوينغ تو تو داي اف يو اف يو بيك ذيم سو باي اتنشن ذا فاكت از ذات وي سينغ بيك ات اب to protect it. So if there is no need for protection because it can be protected on its own, then you don't pick it up. Now they are talking about animals. Today we can add to that, let's say, cars. Yeah, someone walking in the street and he finds a car. Wow, you know what? It looks like someone lost it. Let me, let me take it. I'll take it home and then uh, we'll look for who it belongs to. You don't do that. No one does that. Okay, or uh, heavy utility machines. You don't do that. And you don't find it pass by a construction site 10 o'clock at night, no one is working, and you find a truck there and say, oh, it looks like uh, the poor uh, contractor lost his truck, so I'll take it home. We don't do that. So with those things, you don't pick up. So a camel, you don't pick up. In the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that we mentioned at the beginning, the Masoor and Nabi وسلم, hadith of Khalid ibn Zayd uh, Juhani, uh, the Prophet وسلم, was asked about lost camel. If I find a lost ca camel, what should I do with it? So he said, وسلم, he got angry. In one hadith, in one riwayah, he got angry. Because there is no reason for this question because you don't pick it up. And it's not of your business. It doesn't belong to you. And you, you can't do anything with it. It's safe. And a camel that is lost is safe. It's going to be in town. He, the owner is going to find it eventually. So he said, so I said, don't worry about it. It has its own shoe. Huh? It has its own water. It can't find it, its own uh, grass or leaves to eat. And then until its owner finds it. It's not going to die. If we're afraid that it's going to die or, or, or يعني, vanish, then we, we can say we keep it. But usually with those animals, they don't. And maybe they're even better off but on their own. All right? They're not afraid that the wolf is going to eat them. That's it. So, you, so they are the second type, things you don't touch. We mentioned the animals and we made analogy to contemporary things that uh, we see in our, in our daily life. In this section, قال المؤلف ومن أخذ هذا Now, what if I pick it up? Now, you know, things that I'm not supposed to pick up. I did pick up. لم يملك As we will see with things that you're allowed to pick up, and as the first example, the first example we mentioned that it's not of no value, it's of no value, so you keep it. With these things, you, if you pick it up, you don't own it. You never own it. As we will see later on, some things you end up owning. But with this, you never own. And don't say, I put an ad and I, I looked for the owner for a year and I didn't find anyone, so now it's mine. No. That's actually stealing. But the bottom line is, Ibn Qudama said and the Ulama said, لا يملك. And you, you don't own it by any means. وَلَزِمَهُ ضَمَانَ And if you take it and it dies in your possession or the car gets stolen or gets burned, then you have to compensate <coughs> once you find the owner. Because in the beginning you did not have the right to pick it up. Right? وَلَمْ يَبْرَأْ إِلَّا بِدَفْعِهِ لَنَابِ الْإِمَامِ And he, he took it, now he wants to get out of it. What's the solution? The only solution is to take it to the to Nabi Imam. Yani, yani the police station, a section where found and lost. Let's say a, a city or a town or a county has a section or a building lost and found. You have to drop it off. You have to take it there and say, here is it. Here it is. And in Hajj, when you're in Hajj, you find there are sections. There are small buildings or small. Uh, Areas uh, lost and found. 
And when you find something, you take it there. If you pick it up. We'll talk about Luqatat al-Haram. So now with those second type, if you pick it up, you have to get rid of it. And the way you get rid of it is you take it to Lost and Found, Police Stations. Naib al-Amir, yani Naib al-Wali or al-Amir, yani when, when there was Khalifa and Amir al-Mu'mineen, he had people in charge, yani working under him. That is what they mean by Naib al-Imam. <coughs> the third type, Qal Mu'allif, ما تكثر قيمته من الأثمان والمتاع والحيوان الذي لا يمتنع من صغار السبع. The third type is what has value from يعني things and animals but cannot protect itself. Things يعني anything. And animals, small animals that cannot protect itself from wild animals. يعني if a wolf come, can take care of it for lunch. Yeah, you can kill it. All right. So that is the third type, and applies to that everything else. Beside that is not big enough. That stationary or or the person may be lifted there, it's, and it's safe, and it's not something so of no value that the person who lost it does not care. Now the third type, everything else. Everything else that people have, va they, they have regard to, people value, and people if they lose, they want to look for, and they want it back. But at the same time, if it's an animal, they are afraid that it's going to be attacked, okay? Besides, so anything other than the first type and the second type, everything belongs in this type. And that is the main topic, and that's the main rulings that we're talking about. So we're talking about money, gold, silver, clothes, Stuff like that, you know, valuable things, watch, wallet, money, whatever, okay? So those are what we're talking about uh, now. And if you want to talk about the animals, like goat and sheep and, and uh, cows and uh, little cows and all these things, uh, those things cannot protect themselves. So you have to, you pick them up and then they are procedure you have to take care of and to, so you can find who they belong to who they belong to. And that's the, the hadith of Zayd ibn Khalid, the Juhani, the last part when they asked the Prophet Sassam about Ghanim, قَالْ خُدْهَا فَإِنَّمَا هِيَ لَكَ أَوْ لِأَخِيكَ أَوْ لِلْذِّبْ He said, Sassam, take it. When he was asked about Ghanim, يعني goats and sheep, and what applies, what's similar. He said, Sassam, take it. يعني I, I'm walking in the street, I find a uh, sheep. He said, Sassam, lost sheep, take it. It either belong to you, or to your brother, or to the wolf. Huh? Yeah, and it's definitely lost, so it belongs to another Muslim, or another person. Or if you don't find it, then it becomes yours. And if you don't find him, it becomes yours. Or if you leave it, then neither you or your brother are going to benefit from it, and will end up dead. Maybe a car will run it. All right, if we're talking about now, yeah, it might be hit, and then it's useless. So that is the third type that we will talk, be talking about, inshallah. What is better, to pick it up or not to pick it up? Yeah, I, need, I found something, there's something on the street, law, something falls in this category, something that I can pick up to identify and to look for its owner. What is better, am I obligated to pick it up or I'm not? The arjah, you're not. Okay, you're not obligated. But the ulama, rahimahullah, detailed in this. Now, this last tag we talked about, you have to uh, announce. Whatever way is that is custom to the people, you have to announce for it, advertise for it, that you found one, two, three, and you're looking for the owner. You're obligated. So some of the ulama said, if you are afraid, because you know yourself that you might like it and not announce for it. No? And you know you find the necklace, $50,000, and then you say, let me pick it up so I can find that, who it belongs to. Once you pick it up, you become obligated to search for the owner. And the way you search for the owner, you don't go around knocking on every door asking, did you lose something? You, know, you put an ad, you put, print a flyer, 
you put a web an ad on the website in the newspaper in the masjid outside the masjid outside the masjid huh? stuff like that if you think that the shaitan might deceive you and you are not someone who gonna continue with this plan and you think that shaitan will come to you and you're weak and will tell you well most probably who lost it doesn't need it or he got a lot of money or this and that or you need it if that's the case then you're not allowed to pick it up let someone who can handle it better pick it up or let someone who will deal with the ithim pick it up but not you all right so in this situation you don't pick it up just leave it leave it as it is if you feel that you're trustworthy and you will go through with the obligations that befall you once you pick it up yeah, and you become obligated to do certain things if you pick it up if you feel that you're comfortable to fulfill them then the ulama have three opinions two major opinions but Allah Alam the third one is the right one the first opinion said it's better to leave it it's better to leave it because you never know what can happen to you all right it's better to leave it and this is Ruya and Ibn Umar Ibn Abbas Ibn Umar and Ibn Abbas and had this this opinion also the second opinion it's better to pick it up okay it's better to pick it up and this opinion يعني ذا الدليل والمؤمنون والمؤمنات بعضهم أولياء بعض and you read this ayah and you never think that it can be dalil in this situation but the ulama who have this this sense and this hikmah they say Allah says the believing men and women are the allies of one another and usually one of the duties of the allies is they take care of each other's property and belongings mayit <laughs> Okay, so so the uh, you want the Alisha, good, 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 Shraba, Shraba, and that, and that is a bit nice. All right, uh, so this is the Muminun and the Muminat, believing men and women are allies of one another. So that means if you find something that belongs, you know it belongs to your brother, you should pick it up so you can protect it. Until you give, it, you give it back to him or you find him. Indeed, the believers are brothers of one another, and the brother will care about the money of his brother. All right? The third opinion, which is in middle, in between. So, first opinion said it's better, it's not better, it's better to leave it. The second said it's better to pick it up. The third opinion says if you are in an area, where you find this last thing يعني, on the floor or in the street and you feel that the people in that area are trustworthy no one will touch it or no one, if anyone gonna pick it up will make sure that it ends up in the hands of who it belongs to then it's better to leave it but they say if you are in an area that you know most probably the next guy who gonna find it will keep it and will never announce okay and will never inform people, then it's better you pick it up. Got it? So if we find something in the States, what is better? Pick it up. I actually, Allahu A'lam, yani, anywhere you find it in this time of, of, of age, yani, except maybe 1% areas, it's better to pick it up. If, it's a, if you are in a Muslim yani, place. And the non-Muslims, leave it here. Anyway, it's a big deal. <clears throat> so if you're not afraid that it's going to get lost or someone going to pick it up and keep it or steal it, then it's better to, to leave it. Because once you pick it up, you become obligated. You become responsible for certain things, as we will talk about. So inshallah, we, we, stop, yani we stop here for now. We pray Isha for those who came for Isha. And after that, we continue. We don't have much left. قول قبل هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله رسول الله الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين 
مسألة إذا كان الشيء الملتقط يحتاج إلى نفقة If the thing that is lost and you find If it needs to be spin on يعني you need to maintain it يعني you find a goat for example or whatever يعني you can apply the example here this goat if you want to keep it until you find who it belongs to you have to feed it you have to take care of it huh? and if this goat eats a certain amount every day and you have to pay for that and then usually it's a year as we will see the, the term or the time the length that you need to keep looking for the owner is a year but in this year this goat will need maintenance let's say for example yeah, he needs hay and food $300 and the goat itself is worth $200 now you are entitled when you take care of it and then the owner shows up after a year and tells you this is my goat you tell him yeah before I give it to you you give me 300 bucks because I spent on it 300 bucks so he tells you but the whole goat is worth 200 I don't want it can that happen? of course so now here you are lost and uh, Islam wants to make sure that you don't so in this situation if it's gonna take more money to maintain what you found for a year than its own value then the ulama give you three options and here especially we're talking about sheep and goats and animals because other stuff most of the time you don't need to maintain but let's say this is the example the ulama have three opinions you pick what's the most suitable and for each one it can be different the first opinion قال العلماء يأكلها ويحفظ قيمتها لصاحبها you eat it and you slaughter it let's say it's worth two hundred dollars you slaughter it and you eat it and when you keep its value to the owner so if the owner shows up a year later two months later six months later you tell him I did not know I gonna find you here is I, I slaughtered it I ate it and here's your two hundred dollars that's one option the second option you sell it let's say you're vegetarian uh, you don't eat meat you go and you sell it and you may, you keep the two hundred dollars for the owner in your dhimma يعني, until he shows up okay the third option ينفق على صاحبها ويرجع على صاحبها بما أنفق you take care of it and you spend on it to maintain it to keep it alive and when the owner shows up you ask him for the money that situation only if what you're gonna spend is way less than its value but it's not common it's not يعني, intelligent to spend more than what it's worth All right. so these are the three situations and you have to choose what's best يعني, out of those three situations you choose what's best for everyone especially for the the person who lost uh, who lost his stuff not for the what's best for you yani. all right what's best for the whole situation especially for that for your brother who lost his thing uh, let's talk about how you how you announce for it yani how you make it public how you look for the the owner hukm ta'rif al wajib yani if you pick up something from this category, we said one category, it's of no value. We said second category, you should not pick up, period. This third category, if you pick it up, then you become obligated to look for the owner. You become obligated. And it's not a matter of, op of choice. It's not, an op it's not an optional. You have to look for it. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم عرفها يعني after you pick it up, search for the flat for the owner عرفها يعني clarify declare it يعني make it public that you found and we'll talk about how you 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 term it how you put it together you found uh, money in this place whoever lost money comes to me for example all right 
So you, that's announcement, that's make it public, that is adding, advertising. To look for that. Now how do I do that? It's based on the area. Some areas have newspapers, you can do that. Some areas you can do it, you put, you put a sign outside the masjid, and you know, announcing and, and looking for lost stuff in the masjid is forbidden. Okay? It's forbidden. And that is not what the masajid were made for. Okay? You print out, you make a flyer, you can put it outside the masjid, and people eventually will read it. If you, let's say you find something around in the masjid. Okay? Or you turn it in. Stuff like that. Alright? Sometimes it's maybe the internet. Sometimes the, the uh, local newspapers. Sometimes uh, a flyer. Whatever the situation, whatever is suitable. All right? And you find it in front of a store. Most probably that person will come back to the store to look for it. So either you leave a word with the manager, you put a, f a flyer right there. Okay, you don't find something in Tampa and put a flyer in Orlando. All right? Be reasonable and see what is suitable and what will. But someone who wants to keep it, most probably that's what he's going to do. <laughs> right? And that's why, where we said you do what's best for the person who lost it. مدة التعريف how long? سنة. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم عرفها سنة. Okay? You keep searching for the owner. Huh? You add, you put an ad for it or a flyer, or whatever, for a year, a whole, a whole year. Some of them said, uh, some of the ulama said, the first week, every day. You you announce. Then the first month, yani after the first week, once a week. And then for the whole year, once a month. But there is no dalil on that. And you do your best, okay? You do your best to keep it alive, yeah, and to keep the announcement active for a whole year and whatever the situation is. <clears throat> how you, you announce for it? Yadkuru <laughs> Jinsa. And how you how you put the flyer together? You only mention what you found, yeah, and you, the kind, the type of things you found. You found na a sheep, you put a sheep. You found money, you found a hundred dollars, you put a hundred dollars. You say, I found money in such and such area. Because if you put the amount, then most probably like you're gonna get ten people calling you. Someone who lost hundred dollars ten years ago gonna call you now. But that is the situation. Someone who thinks he lost. So what you do, يَذْكُرُ جِنْسَ You mention what type of stuff you found. Found a wallet, you say, I found a wallet. You don't say, I found a Gucci wallet. You found uh, money, $10, $100, $10, I don't think you should announce for it. You found $100, you say, I found money. Whoever lost money in front of Masjid Liman, here's my number. You know? When he calls, then you ask him the question, how much? If he can identify it exactly, then you give it to him. If not, then you don't give it to him. قال المؤلف فمتى جاء طالبه فوصفه دفعه إليه بغير بيّن. So once you announce and the person that belongs to come to you and he identifies it for you and he tells you exactly the description of it, then you give it to him without بيّن. And you don't ask him for a proof. يعني قال بعض العلماء his ability to describe it is a proof. Okay? The ability, and you don't ask him, show me where you got $100 from. You don't ask for that. Show me where you bought that uh, wallet from. Show me the receipt. Yeah, you don't do that. If he's able to describe it, that means he owns it. You have done, even if he's lying, or psychic or whatever, that's up to him. But if he can identify and describe it, without you telling him what it was, then you give it to him without bayin. قال المؤلف وإلا فهي كسائر أمواله ولا يتصرف فيه حتى يعرف عياه وكاه وصفته. Now, if you look for the owner for a year, you do what you're supposed to do. And no one shows up. And you can't find anyone. Then it becomes yours. Good stuff. Huh? <laughs> becomes yours. 
becomes like the rest of your money. You do whatever you want. Huh? It's like the way you do with the rest of your money. فمتى جاء طالبه فوصفه دفعه إليه أو مثله إن كان هلك. Huh? Don't get so excited. But two years pass, three years pass, but oh, you're on, يعني. Three years pass, and one day a person and tell you that thing you were looking for the owner, it's mine. You ask him what it looked like, how much was it, and he describes it. Then you obligate to give it to him. If you have it, you give it to him. If you have it, then whatever you can agree with him, and you tell him, I need some time to collect it, but you come out Here we go. Some economy and recession. Ask because there are people like that. Allah, we talked about this situation when we talked about uh, loans. Okay? Some of the ulama said, yani if, if you someone lends you money today and then you pay him 20 years later, definitely the value of the money of today is different than the value of the same amount 20 years from now. And some of the ulama, and uh, يعني, honestly, that, uh, that's an opinion, يعني, legit opinion, and it has its own uh, reason and rationale, is that you give him what it's worth, what his money worth today, not what he gave you. All right? Some of the ulama said, if the difference is not much, just give him the same amount. So this way you avoid any fraud. Because the people who, who, who borrow, most probably will feel some kind of hard feelings if he has to give you back more than what you gave him without him realizing all the millions of dollars he has now is because of what you would lend him. That's a human need. Huh? Yeah, and you love money. So, yeah, I need that's an opinion in, in that situation. Well, that's that amount of your question. <coughs> If, it's, if what he finds is an animal that needs to be supported, needs to be maintained, we mentioned the uh, conditions, uh, the options before. أو شيء يخشى تلفه فله أكله تعريف أو بيعه ثم يعرفه. If you find something that if you're gonna wait a day or two or a week or a year, it's gonna go bad, spoil, huh? It's not usable anymore. Okay? This way, you have two options. Either you eat it right away, and then you announce for it, and you look for the owner, and then you compensate him, or you announce and then you eat it, whatever the situation. But you have that flexibility. If it's something you don't say, I can keep it for a year. What's it? It's not going to be any worth after after a year. So you eat it and you keep its value until the owner shows up and you give it to him. Okay. All right. Then he said, Mu'allif rahimahullah hadith Zayd ibn Khalid Juhani uqan wa in halakat al-luqata fi hawli al-ta'rif min ghayri ta'addin fala zamana fiyyeh. If during this year that you're looking for the owner, the luqata get destroyed. Yani you found a necklace of gold and you put it in your safe house and Allah, someone stole it. As long as you gotta go and يعني died all right or got attacked as long as you did what you're supposed to do in protecting this thing you found then there is no warranty on you you don't want to and يعني he cannot come to you and tell you oh my god died in your house give me 200 dollars you don't have to my next as long as there is no no You did what you're supposed to do. You did not do what you weren't supposed to do, or you did do what you were not supposed to do. Just no. That's in general. There is no warranty. Why? Because you are a mean. Remember the meaning of a mean. A mean, you're not. To be asked for a proof, 
that you took care of. Because the fact that you took it, you picked it up, that you put that responsibility on yourself, if we say that you have to guarantee it and warranty it and compensate for it, then you think anyone will pick up anything? No one will. You think anyone will pick up him? No one will. All right? So as long as you did what you said, you are not to warranty or to have guarantee of anything, to compensate. If it gets stolen, if it dies, if it's an animal. And he comes, the goat died, and you did your best to keep it alive. To me, that it died not out of negligence. Do you have to show any proof? You don't have to show any proof. All right? Because you are expected to take care of it. Who wants to take you to court? Yeah, in Islamic court, he can prove that. يستحب أن يشهد عليها. It's recommended that if you pick up something, you found something and you pick it up with the intention to to look for the owner. It's, it's recommended that you get a witness. And you get a witness. You tell him I found this, and I'm gonna look for an owner for the owner for the next year. قال الإمام أحمد أحب إلي ألا أن يشهد Because maybe self-interest can come in later. And you find a necklace ten thousand dollars, and you pick it up with the intention you're gonna find the owner. Then a month later, you're going through financial hardship. Then the shaitan starts. You know what? Obviously, I, a month I can't find. It's almost probably a year I won't find. Right? That's how we start thinking. So if you have a witness, then you might be embarrassed to do that, and expect that he's gonna be asking you about it. Or if the owner shows up, he will tell him. You understand? So it's recommended, not wajib, but recommended that you find someone, you tell him, listen, I find this, and I'm going to start, inshallah, look for the, for the owner. And another reason that you put witness, to protect it from your own heirs. And if you die, your heirs, your kids, your wife, whoever inherits you, they don't come and say, Oh, this necklace is part of the inheritance. No, it's not. Okay? So this way, if you have a witness, then it's enough to protect this money from getting mixed with your inheritance. Uh, remember when we talked about loans, and if you end up bankrupt, what happens? What's the meaning of bankrupt? The meaning of bankrupt is... <laughs> مفلس شو يعني مفلس؟ الحديدة؟ yeah someone who's dead is all more than what he owns. someone who's dead is more than what he owns. which means he owns. إن شاء الله this is في الدنيا. مفلس في الآخرة الله لنا كل منهم. مفلس the bankrupt in the akhirah that's the one who comes with Allah. Start taking from him. He cursed this one, and he hurts this one, and he talked about the honor of throat, and this back bit this one, and everyone takes from his good deeds until he runs out. And they start putting their bad deeds on him. That's al muflis. So if we are muflis in, in the dunya, we ask Allah. So if this guy is the muflis, the bankrupt, has to put a witness. So what happens if the if the lender go to the to the qadi then the qadi do hajj on him يعني, he freeze all his property and he start distributing to the lenders proportionally so he does he put a witness that he found this necklace for example so the qadi doesn't include this necklace in the hajj all right so all these situations it's important that's the benefit of uh, of that and in the, it's recommended you also write the description and all that. We feel the last part that I need to talk about is لقطة uh, الحرم. You all know if you go to Hajj, don't touch anything you found on the street. Don't touch it. Don't do that. That is haram. And that is an opinion of the ulama. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when he, when he uh, in Hadith Bukhari and Muslim, 
he said Abu Hurairah the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when he opened Mecca حمد الله أثنى عليه ثم قال إن الله حبس عن مكة فيل وسلط عليها رسوله والمؤمنين وإنها لن تحل ليحد كان قبلي وإنما حلت لي ساعة من نهار فلا ينفر سيضها ولا يختلى شوكها ولا تحل ساقطتها إلا لمنشد so that is يعني the most important the part that we are concerned about that the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said it's not permissible for the last things to be picked up except if he intends to look for the owner. And in one riwayah, Abad al dahr forever. So it's not one year, forever. Some opinions, forever. So that's why they tell you, if you find anything, leave it where it is. In Mecca, wherever you find anything, you leave it where it is. Okay. Some other opinion said no. The last things in Mecca are similar to the last things anywhere else. That's what Imam Nawawi said. But the Prophet ﷺ here emphasizing the importance of looking for the owner. Okay, and that is also a legit opinion. But to be safe, don't pick up anything. If you didn't know. Or you go with someone he didn't know, and then he comes to you and says, look what I found. I found a wallet, I found this. You take him and there are places for lost and found there. You take it and you drop it off there. That's it, you're done. Or you take it where you found it, and it's better to take it lost and found. Because if you take it back where you found it, most, maybe the person who lost it looked there already. So he will not come back to look again. So. But the, to be safe is just leave it, leave it where it is. قال شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية هذا من خصائص مكة والفرق بينها وبين سائر الآفاق أن الناس يتفرقون عنها إلى الأقطار المختلفة فلا يتمكن صاحب الضالة من طلبها من طلبها والسؤال عنها بخلاف غيرها من البلاد. Some of the wisdoms they said the opinion that says you don't pick it up it's haram. They said because most people who are in مكة are visitors. So if you're gonna find it, pick it up, and then announce for it, they're not going to be there for a year. You have to go back home. And you don't belong to every country. So you won't be able to announce in every country. So that's why they say, leave it where it is, most probably who lost it gonna come back and find it. Because it's very difficult to announce for a year in all in the whole world. All right? So that is an important uh, point. So. ولا تحل ساقطتها إلا لمنشد يعني it's only in the hadith it's only allowed for you to pick it up with the intention to look for the owner and the, the, the opinion is some of the ulama the opinion is you look for the owner forever forever not just for a year no one can do that alright so it's better to leave it where it is uh, what if, what if you pick it up and you start investing it? Yani, you picked up a camel. Not a camel. Can you pick up a camel? You're not. But you picked up a goat. You find a lost goat. You brought it, you have other goats and stuff, and you put it with them, got pregnant. Right? And came from baby, start growing. Who the extra belong to? The growth. The growth of the last thing, who does it belong to? If the growth happens before the year is complete, it belongs to the owner. If the growth happens after the year, it belongs, the growth belongs to you. Because right? now it's yours. But you, if he shows up, you only give him the original. Alright? What if she dies before he comes after a year? Do you give him anything? What if it dies before? As long as you did what you're supposed yeah. to. Sorry. Jazakumullah. And I finish with this story. And uh, some of the yeah, and some of the ulama mentioned this story and uh, they said it's authentic. Some of them said if we if we if we did not know that the Senate was authentic, we would not believe it. 
and it's it's a story that uh, shows you the the reward of the trust and mentioned that one of the of the the students of knowledge who was living in Mecca at the times of Al-Hajj and uh, he could not uh, he was hungry and he was so poor and one day he goes to Al-Haram and he finds a bag and when he opens this bag he finds a necklace of pearls Lulu, يعني, worth a hundred thousand dinar so he takes it home and he keeps starts looking for the owner so he hears a man looking for it I lost this and that I lost a bag so he goes and after he asks him he tells him the man after he describes it he gives it to him. so he pulls out a few hundred dinars from his pocket this man and tries to give it to him reward he refused he said I did it for Allah all right uh, and he refuses even though he was hungry and the reward is okay but he refused that's the honor that Muslims need to have so what happens they separate this man was from a far away land and it happened after years this man traveled in the sea and the ship he was on gets destroyed destroyed and he ends up in a log of, of wood or a piece of wood and he survives he wakes up yani people find him people on the island find him and they pick him up he was unconscious and they, him, and they give him food and all that and this Muslim village or island they take him they take care of him one day they walk and they find him reading in the Muslim. you know how to read will give you this and this if you teach our children how to read. He said, no problem. I had nothing that time. So he started teaching. And people started loving him. One day they find him writing. He said, you know how to write too? He said, yes. So we'll give you this and that. So this, at this time, they were afraid he will leave them. So they said, we marry him, one of our daughters. This way we love him. That's marriage. You get luck, right? but <laughs> but it's a good luck, yeah, inshallah. Uh, they call it in English "wed luck." Right? Uh, so they find this orphan woman, young huh? orphan, and finally he decides he, he get convinced. He stays with them, and he gets married to this woman. On the night of the wedding, they bring her to him. So he's sitting with them and they bring her and all he can look at is the necklace in her neck. The necklace in her chest. Yeah. So the girl starts crying. Yeah, and she didn't even look at my face. So they tell him, what's wrong with you? You broke her heart. This orphan girl, you broke her heart. Yeah, and you're only looking at the necklace. So he says, this necklace has a story. So when they ask him what is this, what's the story, and he tells them the story, they scream, Allahu Akbar. He said, what happened? He said, this, they say, the man who had this necklace was the father of this girl. And he came back, and he used to say he met the most trustworthy man on earth. And he asked him, so what happened? He marries his daughter. Doesn't stop. He marries them. They get two kids. And she gets sick. And she dies. And the two kids get sick. And they die. And he ends up getting the hundred thousand dinar necklace. Something for the sake of Allah, Allah will give him something better. And whoever is stuck in something haram, thinking that if he leaves it, he will lose, trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will give you something better. Just show him that you're leaving it for Allah. So inshallah we stop here and we continue next time.
with bad lakit. Lakit, yani the lost baby, and you find a baby on the street. Since it's related, qulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.